Today, we continue to understand formalization of a learning problem. And uh, in this lecture, we will cover pack learning, probably approximately correct learning. Here's how we'll go about it. Outline of the lecture. First, a quick recap. What did we arrive at the last lecture? What do we know and what will we use at the lecture today? Then, together, we will introduce packed learning model and then move uh, to learning via uniform convergence. Uh, slightly uh, trying to generalize packed learning. Off we go. Recap. Foundations. What did we learn from the last lecture or at the last lecture rather? So last lecture we formalized the learning problem. The mindset, Kai, remember, or all the bias, but in general is the mindset of uh, all samples. Then label set uh, Y, which is either 0, 1, or sometimes we center it and make it minus 1 and 1, but we have to have the main set, label set, just a second, uh -huh. and we have to have training data. Sequence S is often called training set. And it's a sequence of pairs uh, with a cross product or a Kronecker product of uh, uh, set, Kronecker set product of uh, chi and y. Basically just a sequence of pairs of data samples and the corresponding labels, M of them. Not all of them, but just a subset of the training data, the chi. Then we have probability, well, yeah, well, then we have the learner's output. Uh, yeah, then we have the learner's output. And the learn, the, it's important to distinguish. The learner is our learning algorithm, and it produces a function, it produces a program that we execute on every new input and generate a label. So the, the learner is, the, is a learning algorithm that spits out a hypothesis. Call it the classifier, call it the predictor. And then we need to define a data generation model, and we did. So we have D, distribution of data, probability distribution that generate uh, a bias or, or in our example, but it could be just any data, uh, basically D is the environment. And uh, we also assume that correct labeling, true labeling uh, function, that it exists, um, it's just unknown to the learner. And uh, what that means, um, that for all, so, uh, for all I, uh, a sample sub i supplied to this function will will get the true label assigned. So the learner's goal is to figure out this function f. That was the settings formalization of the learning problem. We also introduced a measure of success. Generalization error, risk, true error of age or loss. Loss is the assumed true loss here on the whole domain. L stands for loss with respect to the environment or data generation, uh, data generating distribution, and the assumed existing true labeling function takes any hypothesis and returns or is defined as probability of uh, this hypothesis uh, returning incorrect answer 
on all uh, on on uh, any given x. Empirical loss is simply a normalized count of incorrect prediction over the training set size. So m is the training set size, and empirical loss uh, is s. Uh, empirical loss is l on s on that training set size. So given a training set, uh, which is a randomly sampled subset of x, what can we optimize? That's the problem of empirical risk minimization. We can optimize empirical loss, that is error with respect to the samples. And our samples are that pair. So for all i, For all pairs, we can minimize that error. And we may be able to estimate a classifier that does well on the training set, but uh, what we really want is a classifier that does well with respect to the true loss. So empirical error, empirical risk, we can minimize because we know how to compute it. And so we can keep adjusting our hypothesis we can't do anything to the data, um, as you understand. Uh, we just keep adjusting our hypothesis or um, going through different hypotheses, sets of models, and looking for um, such an age that gives uh, minimal loss or minimizes the loss. We also learned about overfitting. In this simple example, Imagine that our, um, our task is such that we have a um, larger square which has area of 4 and a smaller square where has area of 1. So you can see that uh, the larger square can be tiled with the smaller squares, uh, with 4 smaller squares like that. And uh, you can see in this settings um, a particular learner could return a hypothesis to us that uh, perfectly that perfectly minimizes empirical um, uh, empirical risk by simply excuse me following this rule. Given a sample <coughs> x, which again I repeat in this case x has two components, x1 and x2, it's a two-component vector. Compare if uh, the given x is one of the x's that we've seen before, and if it is, then just return the label of that x that we've seen before. It's somehow um, an extreme case of uh, nearest neighbor, so it, it's like it find the nearest neighbor, but in, that is it. Uh, the, the, not the neighbor, but just the label, uh, the actual point. And return zero otherwise. Empirical loss is zero in this case. Perfect. Perfect error. Ideal um, hypothesis. But wait. Um, if, we, if we do that, uh, then our um, actual loss, um, true loss, will be only one, one over four because it will end up uh, with correct label only in uh, one over four um, uh, cases, in a quarter of cases. Yes, indeed, um, it will return uh, zero uh, in most of the places and it will be correct, but in one quarter of the area it will uh, return zero when it should have returned one, so the error of the true loss will be one over four.
So we also introduced inductive bias and some assumptions. The important assumption is a realizability assumption. That means that um, we assume that there exists such an hypothesis, H star, among the set of hypo possible hypotheses, such that the loss, the true loss, of which H star is zero, that there is a, basically it says there is a solution. Uh, and since there is a solution, that immediately means that for any subset, because this is for all data, for all possible samples, uh, uh, that means that for any possible training subset, the loss will be zero. I hope that's clear. We also introduced an IAD assumption. Samples in the training set are independent and identically distributed. Uh, this assumption is with us for a long time. Uh, Leslie Valiant introduced uh, pack learning in 1984 and uh, now 2020 we're still with that assumption and only now people are um, starting using machine learning algorithms a lot in real life, in real application and uh, we, we're learning that um, we have to do something about this assumption because most of the data is in real world doesn't come IAD. <coughs> but that's 26 years later or 36 year, years later. Uh, let's just stick to the IAD assumption in, um, uh, in this lecture. Independent, identically distributed, IID, if you haven't heard about it before. We also introduced uh, two numbers, uh, delta and epsilon. Delta is probability of a non-representative sample. That is probability of a learner returning the best possible classifier uh, on the training set, but the training set is non-representative, so our uh, uh, true loss is not going to be good at, uh, at all, no matter what you do. And epsilon, the accuracy parameter. Now, epsilon is just a fat factor uh, for all kinds of uncertainties that we cannot hope to achieve the best uh, possible accuracy. Uh, error of zero. So we keep uh, that epsilon. And then uh, what that means is um, we define a failure. Our failure is um, when the true loss is more than epsilon and our success is when the true loss is less than or equal to epsilon. Also, at the end of um, our last lecture, we upper bound delta. So delta is probability of getting non-representative sample. And now we know from last lecture that it is upper bounded by the size of our hypothesis set and uh, a scaling factor that includes sample size and our accuracy parameter. <coughs>